Well, welcome uh, to the first meeting of the new Tidy Models or Tidy Modeling with R book club. Um, if this is your first club, just so everyone knows, we record these and put them up on the R4DS uh, YouTube channel. Um, so be aware of that. But also it means if you miss a week, just go to the YouTube channel. It'll be there. Uh, eventually, I have a backlog to edit right now, so it'll take me a couple of days to get everything up, probably. Um, and the general idea is we come, you know, read, read the chapter, someone will sign up to present it, and then we'll come in here and talk about it. And I've got some uh, slides to kind of go into more details about that, so let me go ahead and do that. All right. So we are um, trying something new for this one. Instead of everyone producing a slide deck, we're going to kind of together produce a like study guide for um, tidy modeling with R. At least that's the idea. Um, and so I I did some work setting this up. Uh, if we if you go to the main repo, which is linked. Um, below here in a minute. Uh, it has instructions on if you sign up for a week, number one, it has instructions on how to sign up for a week and then how to, uh, <laughs> and yeah, how to make your quote unquote slides. Um, yeah, as Tan points out in the chat, this is a book about a book and it's uh, it's kind of my thing, I guess, is to, to do the meta. Um, all right, so, uh, each week, someone will volunteer and present a chapter from the book. Um, the best way to learn the material from the book is to volunteer to present. Um, and usually, well, I guess my point, I, I say usually, but the idea is what that means is a little bit nebulous. Um, because of the way that we're setting this up, I would like you to kind of fill in the, the chapter with some notes about what's in the chapter but usually that's not going to take the whole meeting time. So um, we can discuss, you know, your notes uh, from the chapter and then maybe demonstrate something from that chapter, um, a way that you, you've you used it or just something to kind of play around with it. Um, I don't know exactly what that means yet. It's different every week and um, it will probably make sense as we go. Um, like I said, there's a GitHub repo that... Uh, you know, it's linked within these slides. Oh, actually, I should point that out, that these slides are at r4ds.io slash tmwr. Um, so you can go there to get this book. And then in the book, there's a link to the repo. You can also just click the edit button, and that'll take you to the repo. Um, and like I said, the presentations will be recorded, and they'll be available on the r4ds online learning community YouTube channel, which is uh, Linked here, it's also just r4ds.io slash YouTube. All right. And yes, thank you for, uh, it is now linked in the channel. It will be in a pinned post, all this info um, soon. Uh, I work in education. And so my goal at least is before anyone has to worry about presenting a chapter, I will go and make this first slide that is like what the goals are, the learning objectives for this chapter. Um, I do this as like professional development. So uh, I get paid to do this basically, or whatever, it's part of my work. Um, and it's my way of making sure that I am absorbing this book as we go, uh, because I really want to get good at using tidy models. I've played around with it quite a lot, but I'm far from an expert. Um, so anyway, so this chapter one, uh, software for modeling, uh, the things that we're looking to do here is we want to recognize um, like why they made tidy models, why it's, why it's designed, how it's designed. Uh, we want to be able to classify some models. It, I don't know if someone intentionally was trying to say something or not. I'm going to guess not. All right. Uh, classify models as descriptive, inferential, or, or predictive. Um, define those. Differentiate between supervised and unsupervised models. Uh, differentiate between regression and classification models, differentiate between quantitative and qualitative data, and understand the roles that data can have in an analysis, 
and then apply the data science process from R4DS, the um, Hadley Wickham's book, and then recognize the phases of modeling. Um, <laughs> and yes, Tony, I almost turned this into a package, but I actually think a book is better in this case. All right. So the first thing that they talk about, um, like before the first section really, is about this pit of success, which I think is just a great example or, or way of explaining how, what they're going for. The idea is that um, customers using software should just like accidentally use it right. That is what you should be aiming at, that they just fall into this pit and then they're using it right. And so there, there are two principles is that people should avoid confusion, that it should facilitate the proper usage. You shouldn't be able to accidentally use the wrong columns or, whatever, or at least it should be difficult to accidentally use the wrong columns. Um, and then it should also avoid mistakes, which here means like scientific mistakes. Um, it should guide you towards doing the right thing, um, using, you know, spending your data properly and uh, fitting the right kind of model and all that kind of thing. And so that's what they're trying to do with tidy models. All right, so then they go into um, types of models. They talk about descriptive models, which just describe or illustrate characteristics of data. And um, he has a couple of examples, really like any plot is technically a descriptive model. Um, it might not be that descriptive if it's not that good of a plot, but uh, that's the general idea. Inferential models, where you're basically testing a hypothesis. Um, they, he says that a drawback with an inferential model or, or a, you know, an issue you have is usually there's a delay between when you make your um, inference and when you actually get the real result to test. You know, you say that uh, this book's going or this book club's going to be a hit, but you don't know until you actually have the book club. And so, um, yeah, so there's that delay. And then there are predictive models where you're trying to produce the most accurate possible prediction for new data. Um, they tend to be estimation or how much of a thing rather than inference for like an inferential model where it's just like, will it do it? Um, you can break uh, predictive models down into mechanistic models, which is like, we know how this thing works and here's how we predict it'll work because we have all these underlying principles or most of what we'll be talking about, maybe even entirely what we'll be talking about in this book, empirically uh, driven models Machine learning, basically, where you take the data and derive the model from just fitting the data. Um, some more terminology. Uh, we're going to be talking somewhat about unsupervised models, where you learn patterns or clusters, um, but they don't have an outcome variable. So that's like uh, principal component analysis, clustering, um, autoencoders, uh, that sort of thing. Um, Supervised models, on the other hand, have an outcome variable. So examples of that are linear regression and neural networks, um, or lots of other things. Uh, and within supervised models, regression has a numer numeric outcome, whereas classification has uh, qualitative values, a class that you're looking for. Um, and then quantitative data. Uh, Probably most of us here know this, but quantitative data is numbers versus qualitative or nominal data is non-numbers like a color or that kind of thing. Um, and then data can have different roles within your analysis. You have outcomes, also known as labels or endpoints or dependent variables. That's what you're trying to predict. And predictors or independent variables are what you're trying to use to predict the outcome. Um, the terms in bold are the ones that they use most of the time in the book. And it's also what they use most of the time in the tidy models, um, like, you know, parameter names and that kind of thing. Um, then he goes into the data analysis process, which we'll probably talk about a lot more next week in chapter two. Um, this is the famous diagram from R for Data Science by uh, Hadley Wickham and Garrett Grohlman about the whole process of like what you do with data, where you import, tidy, transform, visualize, and model, and then communicate the results. Um, and they highlight the model in blue because model is like what this whole book's about. And so they break that modeling process 
down into exploratory data, data analysis where you're kind of looking at the data, trying to figure out uh, what it might be able to tell you. Um, I, I pointed out here, actually, it probably belongs on the previous slide, but don't underestimate the cleaning part of that whole process. Um, that's, you know, cleaning, also known as tidying. It's what the whole tidyverse is named after. So obviously it's an important part of data science. Um, you should take some time to really understand your data. And um, I think a good thing that he points out is develop like a clear expectation of what are you trying to model and how will you judge whether your model is successful? It's really a good idea to do that before you start playing with actually making models because how will you know if it's any good? Um, and then uh, the next step would be feature engineering where you're creating specific model terms that'll be in chapter six. Um, then model tuning and selection where you generate a variety of models and compare their performance. Um, and then model evaluation where you're using kind of easy EDA like analyses to choose the best model for whatever your situation might be. But the point or a, an important part of this is that you're gonna do that over and over, like all those steps um, you'll want to, you know, you might get to the end and go, oh, okay, now I want to look at uh, what is my model predicting incorrectly and what might be weird about those cases and how might I want to do better feature engineering to make those cases work better. Um, and then may try some totally different kinds of models. All right. And so that's, that's like this chapter. That is everything that's there. Um, and I just blew through it in 15 minutes. So does anyone have any comments or questions or observations or anything either in the chat or unmute yourself and ask away? Anyone, anyone? Good. Well, uh, Jim, you're, you're at the top of the video. So I'm gonna just be a teacher and say, hey, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to do this. Um, I'm, I'm also, I, I guess, keen on um, this. This book is being written as as we're going through this, right? Yes, um, but I was uh, really intrigued to notice. I don't know if we gave him a kick or what, because a whole bunch of new content uh, got added at like the beginning of December. Um, so I think it's pretty darn close to done now. I'm sure that they're revising, but they've got, I mean, I haven't, obviously I haven't read the whole thing, but just glancing through, there was content everywhere now. And there used to be a bunch of like empty chapters. Um, so I'm interested to see what happens with that. Uh, also Max is, has been pretty active in the Slack since I announced this on Twitter. And so um, I think he is very uh, keen to hear our opinions on things and, you know, uh, what doesn't make sense. Um, he's, you know, his whole job, like why he works at our studio is to make modeling more understandable. And he has that job for a reason because that's kind of what he does. Um, and he is actually interested in making it more understandable. So I'm also very interested to see like how the book evolves as we're working through it. Um, all right, so there's a question in the chat. The utility of a model hinges on its ability to be reductive. What is the meaning of this from the book? Um, yeah, it needs to, like it needs to make things simpler, I think is the a way to look at that. Like if it takes more work to make a prediction from the model than to just do it yourself, then it's not a very useful model. Like if you have to do all the work to interpret all the data that's coming in and out of the model, then your brain's basically the modern model at that point. Does that make sense? Excellent. Um, oh, I'm gonna take the, an opportunity to get on the list. And so Asma, uh, do you have any thoughts? And for example, about how I said your, your name. 
No, you said it perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't have any thoughts right now, but I will probably have a lot moving forward. So excited to get started. Me too. Um, you know, these first chapters will probably be pretty short, but I don't want to skip any. I was originally thinking about skipping chapter two, because probably if you're reading this book, you already have a basic understanding of the tidyverse. But number one, maybe you don't, and you're welcome here if you don't. And number two, it's not really just about the tidyverse. It's also about like the concept of the tidyverse and why it, it goes into a bit about why tidy models exists. Um, so I don't think we should skip anything so far from what I've looked at. And I don't think we should combine anything, even when they're short like this. You never know when you're going to get into a chapter and go, oh, wow, that had a lot of meat in there that I wasn't expecting. So, um, yes. So, um, Jacob says, as someone who's an intermediate user of Carrot, how useful would it be to switch completely over to tidy models and not revert back to Carrot? Or are there benefits to using both consistently? Um, I think like my goal is for tidy models to be what I use for everything, but I don't know for sure that tidy models is there. Like it doesn't have every type of model in it. Um, I'm not sure what's left in carrot that hasn't been kind of replicated in tidy models. Um, I know that they don't plan to do who, sorry, what? I'm sorry, I was just going to add in, it's like, yeah, Carrot, Carrot is so incredibly broad and the right. coverage in Carrot is, is enormous and, and Tidy Models is much more, well, it's unfair to say it's much more limited. It is more focused at the moment. Uh, Max has said that he wants Tidy Models to be equivalent with Carrot, but it, it is not there yet. If you are using things that are more um, esoteric and specialized, <laughs> chances are greater that they will be in Carrot, but not in Tidy Models. Um. And yes, so you can, yes. Um, a couple things on that. I, I can't remember. There, it, So a good thing to do is to look at the Tidy Models GitHub organization because they keep adding packages and some of the more esoteric things that are in Carrot aren't in the core of Tidy Models, but they exist. Um, and I think I, think I saw um, Emil or Emil, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name, but he does some work on the tidy text, for example. I think he is here and I'm trying to call him out, but I'm not sure. Um, which is, you know, it's, its own little universe of, of packages um, for more more things, more, more options within tidy models. And it does just keep growing. They also just recently-ish came out with used models, which is really cool which is like a use this for modeling. Now that one's way super focused right now. It only has a few types of modeling projects in there. Um, but they, so to, to go back to the actual question. So Carrot, it's, it's Carrot's not technically deprecated. It's just not being, it's not getting any new development. And the idea is to try to deprecate Carrot. Um, I think, uh, John, I think, uh, Johnny, um, I think from the lim limited use that I've had with tidy models, a lot of it is meant, is geared toward model ensembling and being able to iterate over different types of engines. Um, so you, well, so, so you can, you can model the data in different ways and then do model averaging which is a lot of the things that they're rolling out right now. Like mm -hmm. even now yeah. um, they rolled out another package that was meant for that. Yeah. And I would, even if you're not going to actually like use the ensembling features, part of the idea is that it's all like, no matter what kind of modeling you're doing, it's basically the same process. You don't have to do a, a different process for, you know, XG boost than you do from um, a different, tree, even, even like a really closely related boosted tree algorithm outside of tidy models, it'll be like completely different parameters and the whole process is different. And their idea is that they, okay, we'll, we'll take those models and just wrap them in a consistent interface, um, which is very useful 
for ensembling because then the stuff going into the models is all the same and tidy models takes care of whatever esoteric thing you need to do in the different types of models. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with the ensembling stuff. I haven't looked at it recently, but when I did, it was pretty light, um, kind of just getting there. But uh, definitely it's it's pretty cool. And yeah, use models, I like a lot. Like I said, like it's here, you run this function and it sets up your like analysis or your, your model doc to that you just fill in from there. It gives you a, a template to work from. He also just released workflow sets. Oh. So, which is another ensembling attempt. Nice. Put it in the chat. <laughs> All right. Oh, that one's even <laughs> more like secret. It's not even in the Tidy Models org. <laughs> I'm finding just the number of packages in the Tidy Models universe a bit overwhelming to wrap my head around at the moment. It's unlike, so with, with Tidyverse, uh, perhaps because I, I came to Tidyverse with a strong SQL background, the, most of the, the metaphors and the package names kind of clicked with me eventually. Uh, you know, Dplyr, uh, TidyR, Forecats, even Per and so forth there. <laughs> with Tidy Models, I, I'm finding the baking um, methodology, uh, analogy, uh, a little tortured at times. And I think that's just, I need to get more comfortable using it. Uh, um, well, he, and I'm not sure if it's going to be in here, but he, oops, I haven't done that part yet. Um, he acknowledged that and has oh, added man. some alternate names for some of the functions so that they're not so tortured. Um, <laughs> because like, yeah, he was like, I mean, it all grew out of that. He had carrot, which had a reason for oh, the name. And so the update to carrot was parsnip. And then from there, it all went crazy. Um, and he is backing off and going, oh, uh, I'm trying to make an easy to use ecosystem here. Maybe I shouldn't use cute, clever names. Um, so yes, uh, I'm trying to catch up on the chat a little bit. And yes, I agree, Maya, that um, it's crazy how many people are here. Uh, so the like the Tuesday night book club has done advanced R and then our packages and now uh, tidy modeling and having, you know, our little group has greatly expanded and it's awesome. It's great to see so many people. Um, so I, yeah, I do like the idea. You can say it out loud or in the chat, just letting us know like what you work in, what kind of, uh, Either if you are employed as someone who does modeling, you know, that or what you're most interested in, either way. Um, so that I like that Mar uh, Maya points out that she's pharma who's obsessed with music analytics. Um, and she also like uh, does cool uh, table construction in shiny apps and such and invents the idea of having a bunch of book clubs. So, um, also, yes, everyone should go sign up for uh, our studio global, which is coming up in uh, two, two and a half weeks, um, at which Maya will have a talk about these book clubs. So um, looking forward to that. Um, there's a lot happening in the chat and I'm not going to be able to keep up, <laughs> but. It is very great that we have so many people. I guess the other um, piece of business we definitely need to go through is someone needs to present next week. And I'm gonna tell you, next week is a ni nice week to learn the general process because it's the tidyverse and you probably already have a pretty good idea of what's in that chapter. Um, so if anyone is interested, either speak up or we can talk about it in the, the chat. Um, and I'm interested to see a second person do it because I don't know. I, feels like this kind of works. Um, I had to do some work to get it to uh, advance like section by section instead of showing the whole thing. And all right, Jonathan Tratner has under or has volunteered. So thank you very much. I will talk to you in the Slack if you need any guidance 
but again, r4ds.io slash tmwr will get you here, which will get you to the GitHub repo. Um, you can build it locally. If you, if you just like set it up in our studio, building the book will render all your stuff and let you play around with it. But when you check it in, you don't have to worry about building it. Uh, I made the GitHub repo automatically builds the book, which is pretty cool. Um, thank you. Uh, Yanni helped a little bit, although not enough yet because I haven't had a chance to actually implement all the caching. Um, but yeah, so I do think it like, uh, as we go through, like we want to do some demos, I would love to build demos into this book. Um, eventually probably move it from, uh, github.io over to, uh, uh, uh shinyapps.io and put some learner tutorials inside of here. Um, which is part of why I have it set up with the redirect. Just remember that link, because that link will work even if we move it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. I like the idea of us kind of working together and making a thing to make it easier to learn this thing. Um, I, again, I work in uh, educational publishing, so I can't help liking the idea of making it easier for people to learn. I, we've got a lot of um, bio people, it looks like. I started off in biochem a million years ago. Um, we've got some NLP. That is my current love. Lots, uh, we got data science consulting. Very cool. Um, definitely keep up the chat in the channel. Um, I like that we've, we've had some just general questions. I will warn you that um, you might get a better reply to some general how do you model type questions in the rest of the Slack um, over in the help modeling, just because we have a dashboard that keeps track of unanswered questions that are in the help channels, doesn't keep track of questions that are in the book club channels. Um, but if you have questions about the book or observations about the book or questions about the chapter that we just read, um, uh, if you look at some of the other book club channels, you will see that we've had lots of like very long discussions trying to figure out something that was in the chapter that didn't make sense during the presentation, but then we go work it out. Um, so we'll see if that comes up here. All right. Um, does anyone have anything else that they would like to talk about with the book or anything related to the book? or to the club or whatnot. John, have we decided upon a uh, schedule going forward? Are we stick with this time? So yeah, it does look like we will be sticking with this time. Um, this is the number one time, but then in a week or so, I'm going to go ahead and start another cohort at the second most popular time. I, um, I'm being a little bit anal about it that the second most popular time has a lot of the people from the first most popular time. So I need to extract all that data and eliminate all the people who voted for the first time and then see what the second most popular time is. Um, but I'll, I'll be doing that. But I, and also I purposefully want them to be a couple weeks behind so that we have two groups going through and working on the slides and ideally like making a better thing as we process through. Um, so yeah. But yes, we will have a meeting next Tuesday at this time. Um, and then probably it looked like Sunday afternoons is going to be the second time, or Sunday afternoon in my time zone, at least. Um, if you have not voted, it, there's a pinned poll of uh, just vote for your favorite time to meet. I still would like those. Um, and we have talked a lot, so normally, uh, when I pulled on the videos, they have the chat transcript and a lot of times I just let those go away into the ether, but I will be pulling this one down to like, I don't know, maybe put it into the book. I don't know yet, we'll see. Um, it's very cool to see all of the people, all of the different uh, ways that people use data. Um, very cool. Anyone else have anything they wanna discuss? Has Max mentioned, um whether or not they're going to work on like more options for model deployment, whether you have to like deploy within SQL server or, um, you know, dot, dot, dot. Um, right. Um, 
not that I've seen, but that would make sense. <laughs> so maybe I could see that being something that comes uh, soon. I know one of the things kind of adjacent to all the tidy modeling stuff that they've been doing a fair amount with is tools for building packages to be compatible with tidy models. Um, so I know like Torch has some stuff that they're doing to integrate all the tidy models, like way of doing things. Um, but yeah, deployment, I mean, it is domain specific, but it's also not like there are some general um, deployment strategies. So it'd be interested to see if they try to simplify deployment, like that it does have some very, very specific requirements. So I don't know. Uh, it'd be interested to see if they do anything there. Yeah, I know the one package that like, um, I think Max ended up taking over was tidy predict and I was using that quite a bit. Um, but then again, it's not like, I guess the way that I was using it was a little more hacky than <laughs> like, true, hey, this thing runs on a job and takes care of itself kind of thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um just separate from that, I actually uh, inherited the uh, AWS.Lambda package and I quote unquote, I maintain that. I got it working like six months ago and then haven't really touched it since then. And I have to because they just made deploying to Amazon Lambdas uh, way easier. And I want to build, like you can use Docker containers to deploy to Amazon Lambda, which is a way to deploy models, which I'm it's actually the way that I'm deploying some models at work. So I'm doing it by hand and then I plan to roll it all into the package. So hopefully that'll be there soon. Um. <laughs> I've also been using targets as a way to deploy to, to the cloud. Yeah. So yeah. either using it for local uh, um, cores or it has built in that you can deploy to AWS, to Azure, to all kinds of things. Really? I haven't then, had a chance to play with targets yet. And then, so. yeah, so different. So you can basically build all, all of your models in parallel and, uh, and deploy them to the cloud. And thank you, yes. That is on my, my very long list of things that I need to play with. That's, um, a, that's a predecessor to um, Drake, right? Yeah. Okay. But he's got, like, he's been doing um, a lot of talks about it, um, and it's it looks very, uh, very intriguing. I'll just say it that way. So, um, it, I'm sorry, is this a successor to Drake? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so, he's, not, uh, he's not maintaining it anymore. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's big news. I have not been keeping up. Yeah, it's better. It, it's more, I don't know. It's more robust. I think that's the word he used also. It's more robust than Drake was. Um, and the ability to fork off and to, to be able to run the different targets in parallel, that's, mm. that's a big jump for him to be able to do that. And you can also knit documents in parallel. Now we're talking. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never found that Drake played very well with notebooks for me. And so you can you can set up like to map across parameters in a in a parameterized R markdown and then run all of them at once, basically. That's very cool. Yeah, so <laughs> we have two important questions. So first Maya wants to know, Yanni, are you in an aquarium of pizza? Yes. <laughs> Okay, that's the important one. But also, yeah, Tim, um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of other books. Um, they recommend a few in that, like, chapter zero of Tidy Models. Um, it depends what you're trying to do, but it's also, like, everything changes every day. So I don't know if you want just the base background. Um yeah, we're getting some recommendations in the chat. So again, this chat, I'm definitely going to have to save. Um, if you said anything you don't want saved forever, 
let me know and I will expunge that. Um, and so now anyone watching this video in the future can just assume that there was something terrible in the chat that I removed. All right, yeah, there are lots and lots of recommendations coming. It so depends on what you're trying to model, I think. I mean, depends on what kind of a baseline you need, but. Um, yeah. All right, anyone else? Anything else? It's very exciting. I'm very happy with the turnout we have, and I know that we have some people who couldn't make this time. So I think we're gonna have a couple of these running simultaneously. Uh, hopefully we don't get ahead of the book, but like I said, it looks, um, oops, that's not the one, but the in the other window I've got, um, it looks like they, they got pretty close to done. Um, they don't, I, I don't know. I don't know that they've, they, like finished all the chapters that they plan, but they have a lot of chapters here so that we've, they've got a few minutes or a few months to get ahead of us. Um, all right, very cool. I will see everyone in the Slack.